everybody, Caleb here, and today I've got this old Gibson mandolin. Um, it's got a big old crack in it right here that uh, I need to work on, and it needs a little bit of a setup. The uh, string height is a little high. Um, beyond that, it's in really good shape for 110 years old. Uh, it looks really good, and hopefully we're going to get it playing really good, but I'm going to go ahead and set her down. And uh, we'll get started working on this. I gotta loosen these strings so we can take this apart so I can get this crack glued back up. All right, so we're gonna start lowering the strings here. Those high strings are pinging. They're a little tight coming over something. These tuners work really well though, which is a surprise. You hardly ever get old mandolins with tuners that work. Yeah, these tuners really work well. Which... Yeah, huge surprise. A lot of these old mandolins, especially on the mandolins, the tuners really, they don't keep up. They get really hard to turn, and these things spin very freely. Alright, so this should be totally loose. We're going to take this tail piece cover off. There's a little cork on the inside to help mute this back. That's also what these are for. These are little string grommet things. Those are for uh, keeping this muted back here so you only get this ringing. You see the saddle is all one piece. So when I'm coming in to lower the action later, and I am going to, I'm going to have to put a piece of sandpaper on here and then just work this back until we, until we lower it. Um, I can also probably scratch an even line across the bottom and take some off that way and then refit it if I need to, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, trying to decide what I want to do here. I think I want to get these strings off and out of my way. I think. Which means I'm going to loosen them even more so I can get them off of these hooks. Like so. Before I do that, I think I want to try something a little different. Okay. That's gonna come off of there.
Okay. Alright, so that should get everything out of my way. So we should have good access here. I think you can see that crack pretty good. It's right here. And it's kind of hard to see from any angle other than... There it is. Um, this is going to be fun, getting this closed up. I am going to want to cleat it because it runs so long with the grain. Um, so I'm going to put a piece of wood in with grain running uh, contrary to the grain in the top so that it will stop the crack from opening back up. Getting a cleat in there is going to be fun with this tiny little hole. But I think we'll be able to do it. So I will go make some cleats off camera because I'll probably end up just laser cutting them. Um, that is my preferred way for making cleats because it makes perfect little cleats. But this ain't moving too much, which ain't too uh, reassuring. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the the lower part won't come up. But I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit, and I'm gonna do it off camera so that I ain't wasting time. We'll see where this goes. All right. So I've been working at this for a little while. Um, it's actually better just the way it's sitting right now, I think, than it was. I did end up taking the tailpiece off. You can see I've got a lot of clamps out because I've been dry fitting, seeing where it goes. I think I'm ready to put some glue in this crack. Um, it's going to be a little bit fun doing that. But I am just going to run some glue along it to get started here. It's a pretty long one. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll pump the crack to help work some of that glue in. And I might just do something like this. that back and forth I can see it moving inside there so that's a good sign now I am gonna glue this crack up first before I glue the clamp on I want the crack to be closed the best I can and then we'll put a, uh, a cleat on the inside I think I said cleat before I cleat it um, we'll do that basically in two separate operations here. So I want to close the crack and then I want to cleat it so it doesn't uh, open back up. Let me grab a moist cloth and we'll finish cleaning that off. Okay. Cool. I can see glue squeezing out, which means there's glue in the crack. Now, for a lot of this, I just want a big clamp across the sides. little block in here and put a little wedge under it to help push down on that higher side. Need to wedge it from the other side. That's looking good. That's actually pretty close to it. I think it's just about right. I want to put a little clamp down here in the end.
That's looking good. So I put this little piece on here to help kind of push it down all the way across. I may even... It's looking just about perfect. I could use maybe one more wedge. I may not even need that. That's looking really good. We'll maybe let that set up for a while. Yeah, that's looking good. I think I'll put this back in there, but we'll let this set up for, you know, a couple hours so that glue sets up hard. And then we'll uh, move on from there. I think after this we'll be making cleats for the inside, but so far I think we're looking good. Well, I lost the audio for the next couple of clips, but I'll try to do some voice over here. Um, after we glued up that first crack, there was another crack that was right next to it that was a lot smaller and a lot harder to see, but I did notice it before we moved on. So I'm getting ready to glue that up here. Um, it runs a little bit closer to the center line here. I'm putting some glue in now. And just like the first crack, I'm going to pump the sides to help move that glue in and kind of just try to get that glue into that crack any way I can. It's a really tight crack. So I want to make sure that I get glue in there so it actually closes up and stays closed. Same way as usual, just a, a moist cloth to help clean off any of that excess glue. Glue doesn't stick to finish very well, so it comes off really easy when you're just trying to clean it off the top. And I'm pressing it together to make sure I can see some squeeze out. Uh, so I know that there's some glue in that crack. And there was some, so we're good to clamp this up. And I think I'm going to clamp it up about the same way as I did the other one. So I'll put a clamp across the widest part of the mandolin to help pull the edges together. And I'll put it as close to the top as I can on the sides so it's pulling the top. It's not pushing in on the thin part of the sides. It's actually pushing against the top. When we get that clamp tight enough on there that it's not going to move, that way I can put some downward pressure underneath it with this block that block helps push everything kind of out, but because the clamp is pulling in, it can't go anywhere except for push those edges together. And that's really what I'm trying to do there with that block and wedge. But it really gets that crack pushed in together because between the downward pressure and the sideways pressure, it doesn't have anywhere to move but back together. After this, I went out and cut some cleats on the laser cutter and I just needed to finish cutting them out. It almost cut all the way through. There was just a couple fibers left to cut so that I could get them out of the piece. And I cut quite a few cleats because I wanted to make sure I had enough spares in case I didn't like one or I messed one up beyond what I wanted to fix. Uh, the other thing with the cleats is the grain is running opposite from how I'm going to put it on the mandolin. Um, so it will run perpendicular 90 degrees to what it will be on the mandolin. I'm starting to get an idea of where I want to put these cleats on this mandolin. You, so you can see I'm kind of placing them out. I just want to kind of have an idea where I want them to go on the inside. Uh, I wanted to put two cleats on the bigger crack and probably one smaller one on the other crack that I wasn't so much worried about. But the bigger one, because it pulled apart even further, I figured was going to be more, more actual tension, so it needed more of a cleat. Now, I'm gluing these cleats on the inside of this mandolin with this tiny little hole, so I'm not going to have any chance to remove any bulk once they're glued in. So I'm taking a file right now and taking off some bulk, kind of rounding the edges off, um, because I'm not going to have any chance to do it once they're glued inside the mandolin. So now I'm showing this tool that I made to help get these, uh, these cleats inside. I put a little magnet on the end so that I could help guide where I was. This way I can use the magnets to clamp my cleats in place, but I also can put a magnet on the outside of the mandolin and keep track of where I'm placing them. Like you can see here, 
I'll put the tool inside and the magnet on the top and they will click together so I know exactly where it is and my cleats can be placed exactly where I want them when I can't see them. So all I'll have to do is put glue on one side of my cleat, tape it to my tool here, and put the magnet on the outside. We'll be able to clamp it in place and know exactly where it is just with the magnets. So now I'm ready to glue these cleats in, and I've pretty much decided this is going to have to be done one cleat at a time. I will glue one in with the magnets, let it clamp up for a while so the glue is totally set take my tool back out, and then do the next one. Um, it's a little bit slower to do them one at a time, but it makes sure that I won't have anything moving out of place or the magnets aren't going to fight me when I'm going as close as these can be. And these are pretty strong magnets, so they'll jump across the mandolin pretty easily. I'm just using my new tool here to tape that cleat down. I'll put the magnet in place on the mandolin, and then when I stick it in there, it will just jump right to where it needs to be. I put a little pivot point on that tool so I could help press against the top, and it does work out pretty good. So we'll let that one sit for a couple of hours, and then I'll move on to the next one. All right, so we've got all of the cleats glued inside now. Um, I think they're looking pretty good. I've gone ahead and cleaned up a little bit. I wanted to kind of show this. Uh, my new favorite touch-up tool for color as I got all these uh, brown Sharpies that came in the, uh, they're supposed to be like skin tones or all the skin tones, but there's tons of good colors for wood. And on top of wood, they're, they match a lot of these older colors, these older browns. So any place that I had to touch up a little bit or that the finish is worn off, a little bit of this dark brown Sharpie and then just kind of blending it with my finger makes them disappear like right here for example the finish is all worn out now this is going to be underneath the foot but i could put a little bit of that on and it turns out really glossy but if i just kind of that spot is way less noticeable now it matches the other colors so i've really liked these uh these brown sharpies they've been really good for matching old colors for tiny little spots that i just want to make them less noticeable um, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and use some Renaissance wax on this top um, right now. I think we should be good and solid. But before I go on, I want to kind of do something with this top to try to make it look a little more even in color. And I think some Renaissance wax will be a good, good, mall purpose. This purpose. <laughs> So I'm just going to use a little bit of this on this top here. And we're going to buff that out. That's better already. I want to go back at it again, and plus I didn't get these higher up sections, so we'll do that first. That's looking pretty good. I want to hit down here again. that's going to be about as good as a mandolin of this age is going to look without doing serious cosmetic work and we don't really want to do that as you can see there that's that's looking good um i think the next thing we want to do is kind of work on the setup i don't think that there's anything else structurally wrong with this now that that top is sound um, so I'm going to put the tailpiece back on, and then we'll 
how you put the strings back on and start thinking about that. So I'm tuning this thing back up here. Um, I got the tailpiece back on and I just set the bridge in and we're just putting the strings on. I haven't done anything else. Here I can swing this back around here. Now the customer that brought this to me told me the action was high, and I think from what I noticed before I started taking it apart, he was right. All right, it's close enough. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw my mandolin pick in there, and oh yeah, man, that is high. Okay, <laughs> that's high. That should hold that pick at the 12th fret. It don't. How much does it not hold that pick? Fifty thou, maybe not quite that much. Forty-five thousandths, probably. Probably forty thousandths, easy. So I could lower it probably forty thousandths across the board. Um, at the 12th fret, and I, the mathematics works out the same. I could take about 80 thousandths off the bottom of this bridge. What I think I'm going to do is just scratch an 80 thousandths line across the bottom of that bridge um, and take it off, just like I do with a guitar saddle. I can't adjust this saddle like I could a normal mandolin saddle because it's all one piece. So what we're going to end up doing is just sanding some off the bottom and then making sure that it receipts on the top. Alright, so that should be loose enough so we can just take that bridge out. We'll set that over to the side. Don't need that right now. We just want to look at this. What I'm going to want to do here is set my calipers to 80 thousandths. And then just scratch a line across the bottom here. So I've got a line on there. I don't know how you can see it, but I can see it pretty good. I'm going to take that off, uh, lower that whole bridge down, and it uh, it should be better. We'll see how that goes. So I took this to the spindle sander to knock off most of it, um, and I'm getting close now. I marked it up the bottom with uh, with pencil, and i am now got a piece of sandpaper on the top. I've been working at this for a little bit, and I'm just sanding back and forth to take the shape of the top on the bottom of the feet perfectly. Um, so like I'll take it off here and you can probably see there's still some pencil marks here along the back a little bit, but that front edge and across here, this is really taking the, uh, the shape of that top. So it's knocking all that pencil marks off. Uh, basically I've got this set up so that I've got a little block in here to hold the strings off so I'm not fighting them. And it's sitting right in front of where that bridge is going to go, or where it's been at least. Um, and my sandpaper sits just about the same spot. That way I'm keeping the right shape on this bridge. And I'll set it back in here and hold my sandpaper down and just work back and forth. We'll keep doing that until I get rid of all my pencil marks, and then we will be perfectly seated to the top. Well, I think I'm ready to tune this thing back up. I got this fitting really good to the body. I can now take my block out, put these strings back on here. I did just oil this board as well as the uh, the saddle bridge itself. Um, I thought 
it would probably look a little bit better if I went ahead and oiled it. So let's get this thing finished up. I think we're going to be pretty close to being done with it once I tune this thing back up. We'll want to probably make sure it's intonated good, but it shouldn't need a whole lot more than that. So I'll get this tuned up now. I'll go ahead and do that off camera and we'll see where we're at. So I want to check the intonation here and I'm pretty sure we've got this all up in tune or pretty close so I can, I can do some final tuning here. Those A strings like falling out of tune. Okay, and then we'll check this at the 12th fret. That says it's really sharp. Both of them are a little sharp. It says the A or the E string is a little lot is more sharp. Uh, if it's sharp, the string is short. So I will move the bridge back and bias towards the E side because it was worse. Now I'll retune. So we got this back up to tune, I think. Be a hair sharp still. Still a hair sharp, so I'll move that back just a hair more. to make up his mind. Flat or sharp. Alright, so it's the same out of tune open as it is at the 12. I think we're good. Um, I did go ahead and put the uh, the little grommets back on here so that they'll stop the back from ringing. Um, I think the only thing I have left to do is really put this tailpiece back on here. I think I'm going to run a little bit of Renaissance wax on this though just to uh, clean it up. And it's probably easier to do off of the mandolin, so we'll do that first, and then put it on there. Renaissance wax is good stuff, especially for old stuff. Buff that off. And then you can see there, that's looking pretty good. I got a little bit more. I'll put that on, and then I think we're going to be ready to play this thing.
this thing is looking really good. Um, it plays really good, and it sounds very, very woody, pretty mellow. Um, I really like the sound. But uh, honestly, the shape that this is in for the age is amazing. We got that bigger, ugly crack closed up. It's probably not invisible, but it is way, way, way better than it was. The other crack, I would say, is invisible. You'd have a hard time finding it there. Um, and beyond that, we got it cleaned up really good, and we got the action lowered, so it's really, really playable. That is if you can play mandolin. <laughs> but this thing is really, really good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and email the customer back and tell him that I think I'm done with it. I think I covered all the things I was supposed to. I noticed while I was uh, getting finished here that the back seam is separating maybe a little bit. And it might just be the binding is pulling away. So I might try to put a little glue in there and clamp that down. Um, but I'll take care of that off camera. We'll be done here for today. But this thing is really cool for a 112 year old mandolin. So I hope you enjoyed watching this little bit of work on here and gluing some cracks up, getting it cleated up, a little tight work. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks for watching and I will see you later.